In this video, we're going to derive some aspects of the electronic structure of a nickel 2 plus ion in OH symmetry through its electronic absorption spectrum, analyzed using a Tanabe Sagano diagram. So, what we're going to do is we're going to derive the splitting between the d orbitals, our T2g orbitals, and Eg orbitals. So, we're going to derive the parameter 10dq, which is equal to delta O. And we're also going to determine the Raka parameter B for this complex, which is an electron-electron repulsion parameter. We're going to understand what this B parameter means in relation to the free ion parameter for a nickel 2 plus ion. This builds off of previous lectures in which we've determined different electron configurations for transition metal ions, so different dn configurations and how the d electrons fill into T2g and Eg orbitals. It builds on our discussion of microstates, so the different ways in which you can align electrons in orbitals and how these different microstates can be grouped together into spectroscopic terms. How these spectroscopic terms split going from a high symmetry free ion, so so-called free ion terms, into lower symmetry molecular terms, and how these molecular term energies change as a function of 10dq, which we analyzed using Tanabe-Sagano diagrams. Nickel 2 plus is a 3d8 ion. In the free ion form, the 5d orbitals have an electronic configuration like this in its lowest energy state. The term symbols for this configuration are a triplet F, a triplet P, and then we have a singlet D, a singlet G, and a singlet S. Upon going from our free ion into OH symmetry, these orbitals split. into a T2G set and an EG set. Filling in these orbitals but with electrons, what we get is a triplet ground state. So in that electronic absorption spectrum that we saw, all of these transitions that we're going to be able to see are going to result from transitions between triplet states. So what we're interested in is how these triplet terms split. So 5-following Hund's rule, the triplet F state is going to be lower in energy than the triplet P. And as we increase this OH field, these are going to split. So this triplet F state is going to split into a triplet A2G, a triplet T2G, and a triplet T1G state, while this triplet P state is going to remain a threefold degenerate state. But now, because we're no longer in a spherical symmetry of the free ion, that triplet P is going to become a triplet T1G. And the transitions that we're interested in 
arise from this ground state triplet A2G into these other triplet states. What I have displayed here is the electronic absorption spectrum for our nickel 2 plus ion in OH symmetry and the Tanabe Sagano diagram for a D8 species. These transitions here correspond to our D to D transitions, our spin allowed D to D transitions. We know they're spin allowed D to D transitions for an octahedral compound because these have extinction coefficients of approximately 50 per molar per centimeter. This lowest energy transition, so nu1, which corresponds to 8,143 wave numbers, results from a transition from our triplet A2G state up into our triplet T2G. So we're doing this transition here for that. That corresponds to nu1. And our nu2 at 13,092 wave numbers corresponds to our triplet A2G transition going into the triplet T1G state originating from our triplet F term. So it's that transition there. The triplet A2G transition to triplet T1G transition originating from the triplet P atomic term is too high in energy and is buried over here in the high energy transitions. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the ratio of nu2 over nu1. This ratio, which equals 1.608, is going to tell us where along our 10 dqb axis we need to look for our different vertical excitations. What we're looking for is where the energy corresponding to the triplet T1g excited state over the ratio of the E1b corresponding to the triplet T2g excited state is going to equal 1.608. Something that I need to point out before we go on is that I start to draw horizontal lines connecting the excitation to the various states across to the y-axis is that the values that I'll note for the crossing on the y-axis might not actually correspond precisely with the value that you'll see along the y-axis. And it just simply has to do with the fact that I'm drawing these freehand while I'm actually looking at values that I obtained from a high-resolution Tanabe Sagano diagram. Nickel 2 plus ions, we know, have relatively low values for 10 dq. So we know that the ratio of 10 dq over b is going to be relatively small in magnitude. Because of this, we know that we can look down on this end of the Tanabe Sagano diagram. So as an initial guess, we're going to use a 10 dq over b ratio of 10, just as a guess point. So going through, doing this vertical drawing originating from 10 and going up, we get crossing of the lines for the triplet T2G here and the triplet T1G here. Looking over, we get these values here. So an E2 over B at a 10 dQ of B over 10 of 16.6. E1 over B 
equal to about 10.1. So that gives us a ratio of 1.64, which is a bit higher than that 1.60 ratio that we're looking for. Because this is higher, we know that we need to move to the right. So moving to the right, we're going to now guess a value of 15 to not go up too high. So going there, we now cross here and here. What this gives us at a 10 DQ over B equaling 15 is an E2 over B equal to 22.3. We're going to divide that by an E1 over B and add a 10 DQ over B of 15. That's equal to 14.9 which that ratio is 1.50, which is too low. So we know that it's somewhere in between a 10 DQ over B of 10 and 15. We now know that the value for 10 DQ over B is equal to somewhere between 10 and 15. So we're going to guess a value now of 12.5. So going through and doing that vertical line, originating from 12.5, we get this. We cross the triplet T2 G state here and the triplet T1 G state here. So E2 over B at this point is equal to 20.2. E1 over B is equal to 12.6. Going through Dividing those together, we get 1.60, which equals that ratio of nu2 over nu1 that we determined before. So we know that the 10 dq over b is equal to 12.5. We can go through now and solve for the values of b. So e2 over b is equal to 13,000. 92 wave numbers over B, which is equal to 20.2. So we get a value, value for B equal to 648 wave numbers. E1 over B is equal to 8,143 wave numbers over B which is equal to 12.6. Solving for B, we get 646 wave numbers. Averaging these two, we're gonna have a B equal to 647 wave numbers. Using 10 DQ over B is equal to 10 DQ over 647 wave numbers, which is equal to 12.5. We can solve for 10 DQ. And this equals 8,090 wave numbers. So we've solved for the 10 dq parameter, the splitting between the eg and t2g orbitals, and also the Raka parameter b. Just to recap, from that analysis, we've determined that that nickel 2 plus ion in OH symmetry has a splitting between our t2g and eg orbitals equal to 8,000 90 wave numbers, and we also calculated that the Raka parameter B for that complex is equal to 647 wave numbers. Now this B parameter reflects electron-electron repulsion.
and we can compare what B is in the complex versus what B is in the free ion. For nickel 2 plus, B for the free ion is equal to 1080 wave numbers. So it's significantly larger than what we calculated it is in the complex. And the reason just has to do with the amount of space that the D electrons are occupying. In a free ion, those D electrons are confined in space to a relatively small area. But as you go and you generate that complex, so the nickel-2 complex in OH symmetry, we now have those D electrons contained in nickel ligand bonds. So these D electrons can now occupy a larger area, therefore electron-electron repulsion is decreasing as we go from the free ion to the complex. This decrease in the Rocca parameter B is something that's referred to as the nephilexic effect. Or the cloud expanding effect. Essentially what we're looking at is the increase in the electron cloud, the area that these electrons occupy. And we can quantify this through a parameter beta, which is the B value for your complex over the B value for the free ion. And this beta is always going to be less than one because these electrons are going to always going to be occupying a space that's larger than what they can occupy in the free ion. So for this compound that we just analyzed, beta is going to equal 647 wave numbers over 1,000 80 wave numbers, which is equal to 0 0.599. What this is a reflection of, to some extent, is metal ligand covalency. The smaller that this beta value is, the higher the degree of metal ligand covalency you have in your compound. So we can say that this compound has a significant degree of nickel ligand covalency. So this is giving us more insight into the electronic structure of this complex. Not only are we giving 10dq, but we're also getting insight into how covalent this compound is. In the next video, we're going to be going a little bit more deeply into Tanabe-Sagano diagrams by looking at a cobalt 3 plus species where now this can be either a low spin or a high spin compound. And we're going to see how we handle those using Tanabe-Sagano diagrams.